This time, I am going to demonstrate some further aspects of the game. With the assistance of Barrett and Oliver, both Fulham International. This is an exercise for a way of learning to combine. You will notice that the ball is first mastered and then passed to each other with the inside foot. Barrett and Oliver practicing heading the ball, which is a great essential in football. Goes without saying. Football is the planet's most popular game, played by millions and watched by billions. But how many of those understand, really know the story of how football was born, how it developed and how it became the juggernaut that it is today? I mean, how did we get from these to these? How did we get from this to this, from this to this. How did local lads become global superstars? And how did something that was keeping working class lads out of trouble turn into the industry that these days they called the beautiful game? This is my old mate Herbert Chapman. They say he invented the modern arsenal. They say he invented modern football. Well, like all great managers, what Herbert Chapman did do was know a good player when he saw one. Fred Spikesley, in my judgment, was unsurpassed both in poise and balance and in his ability to work the ball with both the inside and outside of both feet. Can't argue with the great man. And neither did the fans who used to call him the wind. At the turn of the 20th century, Fred Spikesley was the fastest, most skillful, most exciting player on earth. And with your help, we want to tell Fred's story. We want to tell the story of how Fred changed football forever. It's time for the world to rediscover a forgotten legend. Fred Spikesley wasn't just a great player. He was football's first great entertainer. Here was a lad, grew up in a dockyard back street in Gainsborough, Lincolnshire, and went on to score 300 career goals, winning every major honour going and scoring the first ever international hat-trick against Scotland. And somewhere along the line, he ended up being chased up a touchline by a future Queen of England, but all that, was just the start for our Fred. After retiring as a player, he shared a stage with Charlie Chaplin and during the First World War, escaped from a German prison camp. Here was a footballer now famous all over the world and he became the first to coach on three continents. In Europe alone, he managed the Swedish national team and in 1927, guided Nuremberg to the German championship. It's no exaggeration to say Fred Spikesley was the George Best of his day. And sadly, as with George, it ended in tears. Fred was a compulsive gambler and what they used to call a bit of a ladies' man. Maybe it was fitting then that he met his end on ladies' day at Goodwood Races, dying with a winning betting slip, uncashed, clasped in his hand. Fred Spikesley's life is an adventure straight out of the pages of Boy's Own. It also helps tell the story of how football went from being the working man's game to become the global entertainment industry that we know today. By clicking on the link in the video description below, you can help us rediscover Fred Spikesley's story for a global audience for the very first time. <laughs>